The starting point of the, of the program was an understanding that um, the NPT in particular uh, had essentially stalled. We came to the uh, conclusion that as a UN entity here in Hiroshima, surely there must be something that we can, that we can work on. It's palpable the, the impact that being here has uh, on all aspects of, of the training course, the engagement of the participants, um, their enthusiasm for, uh, for knowing more about the subject, their um, keenness to get involved in the, in the practical exercises surrounding the course, and generally to, to benefit from the, the complete experience that Hiroshima has to offer. These sessions uh, were elaborate my knowledge about the NPTs and as well as the CTBT and other TTs that related to nuclear disarmament non proliferations. And I have also learned the perspective of nuclear weapon state and non nuclear weapon states. I've made uh, some friends, especially colleagues who work in the same uh, fields as uh, I, what I do. So I think it's very relevant and it's very useful in the when uh, I, I will be working in an international forum. The course itself um, was held here in Hiroshima. So it gave me a, a better understanding of the humanitarian consequences. It's very much built on feedback from participants and feedback from experts that we, that we work with in our needs assessment process. So we start off with Tarek. We get him to provide an outline of challenges and opportunities within the nuclear discourse at present the history of it, where we are now, why we're here. We then focus, we come down a little bit, we focus on the NPT itself. Where did it come from? What was its genesis? What were the expectations of it as a treaty? And then how has that played out in recent uh, meetings? So we describe the machinery to them, which countries are members, which issues are dealt with in which forum, what are the reasons why there is continuing stalemate, and what are the positions of the different grouping of states? So it's to explain some of the intricacies and details which are difficult to find written up in articles or newspapers or in scholarly texts. So it's to try to give them the other side of, you know, how facts might be presented to them and then how they can uh, address those facts and ask more penetrating questions. We then have, for example, Yuri come in and talk to us about what is happening within a regional sphere, within areas that are able to be contextualized by the participants in regards to nuclear discourse, in regards to non-proliferation, in regards to disarmament, in regards to the NPT uh, and, and regional agreements. Focus on one specific area on nuclear weapon free zones in Asia-Pacific regions and uh, their roles in strengthening non-proliferation regime in general and another one about the confidence building measures, the experience acquired by other regions, the um, guidelines uh, developed and recommended by the uh, United Nations through UN disarmament commissions on that. And I hope this would be a real practical assistance and advice how these people can use they receive knowledge from uh, here and guidance how they can use it in their practical work. And then we have Tim, and Tim is very, very deep UN. Uh, he comes from a disarmament negotiation background, and so he brings in some of the uh, insight into what are the expectations and obligations of people at these specific fora themselves. How do they work? What are the processes that these people need to be, that these participants need to be aware of uh, when they go into these? I think it, uh, it gives insights into how the nuclear weapon states think about um, their uh, nuclear weapons and the doctrines um, that surround their potential use. Um, but also uh, to give insights into the kind of steps and, and, and processes that will be necessary um, amongst all nations um, to continue to drive down the, um, the overall total of uh, nuclear weapons um, in the world. And then from a UNITAR point of view, we work with them, we take it right down to a personal point of view and we, we work with them on what is your work style, what is your negotiation style, 
What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses when you're in a negotiation situation? And really working to find out, understanding those personal strengths and weaknesses. And then we say, well, let's elevate that to your team that you'll be possibly negotiating with. Let's elevate that to the identification of uh, the needs, the requirements, the, the strengths of your negotiating counterparts and how are you going to more effectively uh, fulfill the role that, that, that is required of you at, at these multilateral forums. For UNITAR and for the prefecture and the city of Hiroshima, uh, this is a valuable contribution they can make to bringing people who are deciding on these issues close to the reality of what happens to people when nuclear weapons are used. In terms of um, negotiations, in terms of the expectations of different groups during negotiations, and also on the substance itself. One of the key strengths of holding training in Hiroshima is, is that it allows people to, um, as they say, put aside uh, the, the immediate and, and focus on the important. For people who are in the Ministry of Defence, or the people who are in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, is actually very, very important and useful information. So. I really learned a lot from this course.